Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. The Orange Fountain means it's homecoming time at OSU. And do we have a treat for you this week? The hardest working horse in college football. We're behind the scenes with Bullet, tagging along to a recent game where Bullet gets a lot of crowd time, but you'll also see what life is like for him away from the spotlight. That's all coming up a little bit later, but first we're talking about hay and some of the things you might want to consider if you're buying from an outside source this winter. As, as we're here at the end of October, uh, moving into November, uh, we have already fed a, a lot of hay up to this point that normally would have been fed in December, January, and February. Uh, so as, as a lot of these producers are looking to uh, uh, purchase some additional hay, uh, they're going to have to move to some regions uh, that, that may not necessarily be uh, here in the southern Great Plains in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And the varieties that they would normally be used to getting and, and feeding their, their cattle, I guess. We've seen a lot of the trucks on the highway, of course, and, and, and talked about that. What are some of the, the tips that you would have starting out if someone is purchasing hay from out of state? First of all, just kind of what kind of hay is it? Yeah, well, I, I think... Uh, one of the reasons that we may have a, a little bit of concern, uh, uh, some of the hay producers in some of these areas, uh, because they are seeing a, an additional market, they may be harvesting some hay uh, from some, what I would call non-traditional haying areas, uh, highway right-of-ways. Uh, there may be some old uh, old pastures, old go-back fields that, that are um, in forage species that may not be that, that high a quality. Uh, a lot of these areas may have some uh, foreign material, some trash and, and weeds that may cause uh, some nutritional problems. Uh, so I think one of the first questions that you should ask when purchasing hay from an outside source would be just how clean is the hay? That'd be the first opportunity just to find out a little bit about what type of hay it is. And then kind of determine where the hay would be harvested from too, because that has some impact as well if it's close to the highway or in a more traditional pasture. Yes, you know, and, and uh, along that same line of thinking, the, the second question would be uh, what type of hay is it? Uh, trying to get an idea of, of the species. The answer may be uh, it's native grass hay uh, or prairie hay could be Bermuda grass hay, alfalfa hay, uh, fescue hay. Uh, one of the other, other answers that you may get from that question is that it's a mixed hay or mixed grass hay. Uh, if that's the answer to the question, uh, it would be important to find out what type of grasses or what type of other plants are in the mix. Okay, and another question you say is how was the hay managed? Because that'll give you some clues of, of sort of what the quality is and what the overall picture is. Yeah, when you ask that question about uh, how was the hay managed, you're trying to, to find out the level of, manage, uh, level of management, um, particularly whether or not that hay was uh, fertilized, if it was an introduced grass, or whether or not there was any weed control measures um, that had occurred on that. And so that's uh, those combination of those three questions, although they may not give you an overall idea of, of you know, the quality of the hay, that will certainly give you an idea of whether or not there's going to be any problems with some foreign material that may be in that hay. And we talk about all these things if a, a producer is, is purchasing this hay and it's sort of unfamiliar territory, I, I guess you could say, um, you can get around it with your management techniques. There are ways to compensate, which we've talked about in, in the feeding area. So it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world, okay. but it is it's, it's important that they understand a little bit about what they are, are purchasing, especially if it's going to be from outside the, the region of Oklahoma. Okay, and then getting a hay test then will help you determine what your next steps uh, need to getting be. Getting a hay test is important, whether they're buying it from across the street or whether they're buying it from Alabama. Okay, and we always encourage that. Darren Redfern, our forage uh, extension specialist, thank you very much. And for more information on that hay test, just go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.